Today, we're going to discuss ideas on how to get you out of a rut if you're having a bad practice session. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. So no matter how long you've been learning the bagpipes, whether it be a few days on the practice channel or 25 years in like me on the Highland Pipes now, well, there are going to be days that things just don't go your way. Not every practice session is going to be amazing, and sometimes that's okay. But what do you do if you're getting truly frustrated and really just grinding that stain into the carpet of time and energy that you're putting into, whether it be a tune or a technique or something that's just not working for you? Well, let's talk about a few different ways to think about it. So if you're practicing and you think things are not going well, I would give it at least five minutes. Play for five minutes and see if maybe, just maybe, things turn themselves around on their own. It can be really easy to just quit after a minute, 90 seconds of not being able to get in the tune, not being able to get your fingers to fully cover the holes if you're a beginner. Whatever the particular thing that's annoying you might be, it's really easy to give up quickly. I'd give it at least five minutes and see if maybe, just maybe, it starts fixing itself. If it has to do with the tune, I would take a look at the thing that's not working. Is it the musicality of the tune? Maybe the best thing you could do with that time is to go find a video of somebody else playing it on YouTube or a recording on Apple Music or whatever your music provider is, finding somebody else to listen to and maybe incorporating that into your practice regimen might go a long way to helping you find that musicality. What if it's a bit of technique? What if it's the C doubling in Scotland the Brave and there's 19 of them in most versions of that tune? What if it's just not working? Well, maybe that day, rather than just hammering Scotland the Brave repeatedly, what if you just work on the C doublings by themselves for a bit? Maybe three minutes, maybe five minutes, maybe the entire practice session time you have allocated if they're not going well. Maybe it's just a particular grace note. Maybe you're finding that your D grace notes are too big in any of your motions. So maybe doing some exercises to get that D grace note down could be helpful. Really kind of going in and trying to break apart what it is in your practice that's not working. For the beginner, coverage on the holes can often be a problem. If you're having coverage issues on your practice channel, you could consider getting some hair ties or small rubber bands. And as you can see here, I've kind of set them up almost like frets, if you will, around the holes. And that can go a long way for the beginner to kind of have a temporary solution to help guide the fingers into place. So all of these, it's kind of thinking maybe a little outside the box. It's kind of easy to just start your practice session with you go in, you play the tune, you play whatever you're trying to do, you start at the beginning, go to the end. There might be some things you can do along the way to break it up into smaller, more bite-sized chunks that you can be successful at. But let's say that's not even working for you. For whatever reason that day, it's just not a good day. And hey, they happen to us all. The one thing I would not do, at least not on a daily basis, is continue grinding bad practice into, well, permanency. If you're not doing something well, and then you go repeat it a ton of times, well, you have just repeated the mistake a lot. And that is not, well, useful. It's not going to be productive to you moving forward the way I know you want to. So number one, if it's not going well, I would quit while you're ahead, or at least before you get too much further behind. Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Only perfect practice makes perfect. So you've put your pipes down, you've put your channel away, you're done practicing for the day. Should you just go out and do whatever? Well, we're all busy. Maybe you do have a lot of other things to do, but if you've already allocated this time to your bagpipe practice and yet you feel it was counterproductive to continue, I think that's a perfect opportunity to do what I kind of mentioned earlier with the musicality, put on some pipe music. Go to YouTube and look up grade one pipe bands competing. Go look at some of the great soloists out there. Stuart Little, Jack Lee, Angus McCall, Willie McCallum, the list goes on and on and on. A ton of great players with a ton of footage to watch. I've said it in another video up here that you need to listen to more pipe music, and I mean it. This is a perfect time. If your practice wasn't going well, you can still surround yourself with quality piping and continue to build your ear, continue to build your repertoire in your head, if not your fingers, by listening to more pipe music. 
Finally, the other thing that can't be overstated, this is a very physical instrument. If you're playing the pipes and you're just, your chops aren't holding up, your arm isn't holding up, you're getting winded, you might need to think about getting into better physical shape overall. The single biggest thing I ever did to help my piping was get relatively fit. Don't get me wrong, I don't go do triathlons or anything like that, but I do try to keep a relatively reasonable amount of fitness, not only for my overall health, but I find it really helps me, well, continue to command the bagpipe. It's really easy for this thing to boss you around if you're not strong, if you don't have a lot of cardiovascular, you know, capacity in your breathing. So maybe during that time when you're listening to pipe music during the rest of that practice session, if fitness isn't part of your overall you know, routine, maybe this could be a good day to, I don't know, do a couple of push-ups on the ground, maybe from your knees, you know, something. Try to think about any way you might be able to get more physically fit, just putting some pipe music on in your ears and going for a walk just to get, you know, the blood flowing. All of this stuff can go a long way. What if it happens more than one day in a row? We all have the off day where things aren't going well. But what if it's two, three, four days in a row that aren't going well for you? That, my friends, I think is a perfect time to reach out to another piper, your bagpipe instructor, your pipe major. Talk to a fellow piper and see what they've done to get through those moments. Maybe just getting together with another piper and playing and worrying less about being productive for a day or two and rekindling the joy that you feel with the instrument might be the best thing you can do. But your pipe major or your pipe instructor may well have specific exercises that they know you're weak on and they suspect strongly might be your issue. But if after all of this you still feel like you're in a rut, there's a few things you can do. One, think about making your practice sessions shorter for a while. It could be that a 30 or 45 or longer minute practice session is just more than you can you kind of maintain right now, sustain in your head. So why don't you actually plan for a 10 or 15 minute session, maybe two 10 minute sessions a day, three 10 minute sessions a day, maybe two 15 minute sessions a day. Shortening the practice time for each session can go a long way to helping you not feel as frustrated. And if even that doesn't work and you're in a rut, you might just need to take some time off. It's never my first suggestion, hey, why don't you just go and quit? But if you're not excited about your practice, if you feel you're really just kind of, again, grinding mistakes into the carpet, like, ah, you know, and it's like, you're not going to get that stain out easily or readily, not without a ton of work. It might be best to just back away for, I don't know, it could be a few days, it could be a week. Only you're going to know how long you might need to take a break from the pipes. I continue to listen to pipe music. I would continue to talk to my piping friends. I would try to do all of that. But every once in a while, people find that the pipes aren't for them. I hope that's never the case for anyone watching these videos, but hey, there's a time and a place and a chapter for all the things in our life, and maybe this isn't that time, and that's okay. I'd rather see you come back to this at some point in the hopefully near future when you're re-motivated, you have the time, and that you're not feeling maybe as frustrated as you currently are. But again, I'm not saying to stop playing first off. Try all these other things, but Again, we all fall into ruts with our practice, and here's just a few ideas of maybe, perhaps, how you can get out of that, you know, negative space up here or in here. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something on this video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to helping support the channel. And you'll see names now of folks scrolling up, including Miss Carrie Tresek, my number one supporter. But these are people that support the channel on a monthly basis. They often get early access to videos and other perks. So help support the channel and go check out my Patreon. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise with things like hats and hoodies and mugs and t-shirts. So go check out some bagpipe merchandise and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Well, thanks again for watching, everybody. I'm Matt Willis, Bagpiper, and until next time, cheers. Cheers.